Hello everybody, how are you today this beautiful, beautiful morning? I'm Karen Jane Casey and on the podcast, Turn to God with Karen. This is where we find encouragement through our struggles and lessons from our experience on, and what the Lord has to say to us. Please know that during this 10 to 15 minute episode, I will not be lecturing down at you. I will not be preaching at you. But I'm sharing my journey, and I'm still on it. We learn together. If you missed my episode, A New Song Rises Up, I hope that you'll go back to it. That episode was essentially a premiere of my book, my latest book, released September 29th. And I have a study guide for you to journalize what you've um, gleaned from it and what applies to your life. In this book, I share my testimony of some struggles that I faced, and I share pieces of my journey, what I've learned, and how the Lord has rescued and saved me. And you can find it at KarenJaneCasey.com, C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. Well, today's, today's title is Overcoming Domestic Violence, and this is a topic that I feel like I'm qualified to speak on because I come from the world of hard knocks. (laughs) So I believe that my life is a miracle, that I'm even alive, because the Lord has rescued me time and time again. I faced hardships, loss of loved ones, failures, and bad choices. But for most of my life, I have been in various stages of abuse. And it, of course, began with childhood. That's where I learned things that were not true. But it was shown to me over and over again. I began life in a, deme- in a dysfunctional and violent home. My first memory, in fact, is of my mother beating me. At, I was only three years old. And she was beating me in the head with her fist, sometimes a brush. She would storm into the bedroom hysterical. And my sister, only a year and a half younger than me, would watch, terrified. And my father, he was in the other room. He never did anything to stop it from happening. So our childhood, my childhood, was filled with abuse. Favoritism happened and a lot of verbal abuse as well. So then I went into adulthood Believing the lies, believing that my life didn't matter, that I wasn't enough, and I was rejected. I didn't belong. I was not loved for whatever reason. So then I failed at relationships. And when I was in my 40s, a significant period for me because I failed at another relationship and I left the church. I essentially turned my back on God. And I met a very charismatic but violent man. He was like my mother, and I felt stuck as soon as we were into it because that was my definition of love. So one minute he would be very affectionate and loving, and the next minute he would be very cruel and abusive. He even tried to kill me, and I cried out to the Lord, and I did find a way of escape. But even while I was in this women's shelter, I wanted to forgive him. I wanted to go back. I didn't want to face that someone I loved had actually tried to kill me. And I thought, surely it will not happen again. Everyone knows about it. He will be thankful that I did not press charges. He will be grateful and will live a happy life. But that wasn't true. I faced many tortures and abuses for another year or more, two years. And finally, I couldn't bear it any longer, and I cried out to the Lord again, this time begging forgiveness for turning my back on him, asking for rescue and deliverance. And I rededicated myself to the Lord Jesus. So what happened? He did give me a way of escape. And my recovery was long. During my recovery, I got involved in relationships with people who were toxic, and I didn't recognize that as abuse. Finally, I 
cried out to the Lord. I cast my cares on you. I cast my cares on you. How do I do that? And not immediately, but the Lord dropped it into my soul. Your season of abuse is over, and I never meant for you to be in it. I didn't realize until that moment that it had been abuse again, and I did not have to be in it. It doesn't matter if it's your mother, your church member, your in-laws, your boss. If that person is habitually toxic to you, you need to get out of that environment, just like in domestic violence. And I rededicated my life to the Lord and doors opened, doors opened for me. And in that process, I wrote the recipe for overcoming. And I want to share with that briefly with you. It's also in my book, um, A New Song Rises Up. So in the recipe for overcoming any challenge in life, the first ingredient is to turn to God. Turn to God for for forgiveness, for rescue, for salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And the next prong or the next uh, ingredient would be to safely leave your dangerous environment and toxic environment. And, and that might require you to call 911 or to contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline number 1-800- 799-7233. This step, this ingredient is very dangerous. You will very likely need resources from experts who can give you an escape plan and help you through it. And please know that that includes any kind of abuse, including toxic people habitually being Giving, being mean-spirited, mistreating you, rejecting you, manipulating you. The next, the next ingredient is have faith and believe. Believe that better days are coming, that the Lord wants better days for you. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give you a life of abundance, overflowing. That's what the Lord wants. And you know, especially in this day and time with the virus going on, we are so tempted to be fearful. But fear and faith are opposites. You have to choose which way you will go. The next ingredient is gratitude. Be grateful for all that the Lord has already brought you through. Be grateful for what you have now. Be grateful. Be thankful. And you know, you cannot be thankful at the same time that you're in a pity party, complaining, whining about what has happened to you in the past. Instead, you need to be thankful for everything that the Lord has given you. Praise Him. And then the last ingredient, which may be the very hardest, but it's also very necessary. Forgive. The Lord has forgiven you. Forgive yourself. And forgive those who have deliberately harmed you in some way. Your oppressors, your enemy, your adversaries. Forgive them for your soul's sake. And I want to emphasize that forgiving them is not at all the same as going back. Trust may never happen. And if it does happen, it would be slowly after they've proven themselves to be trustworthy over a period of time. And and also forgive the indifferent those who knew about your circumstances and failed to do anything for you forgive them you don't know what's in their heart so um, like I said I rededicated my life I've been able to share my message with other people and and as I do it I, my healing in the same area they are healed and as I bless them, I am blessed. It is always good to share your message of what God has done for you and show others that he can do that for them as well. I didn't deserve it. Nobody deserves it. That's why Jesus died on the cross for us. And he saves. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he, 
he is deserving and so we are well that is essentially the recipe for overcoming like i said it's also in my book in detail so i just want you to know that when you pray when you praise praise the lord and when you have patient faith and pursue peace that means to be around people who build you up then amazing things can happen amazing things can happen like in my life miracles happened in my life what the enemy meant for harm what the enemy meant for evil God has a good plan a good plan for you well also Psalm 34 18 the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit so when t hard times come when we're struggling we can change our focus we can turn to God and he is our strength and our refuge in times of trouble each person can decide when they're tempted to pray to praise the Lord to have patient faith and to pursue peace and depend on the Lord for deliverance and redemption salvation so when we turn to God with praise, thankfulness, and patient faith, always know that amazing things can happen. Well, I don't want this episode to go without giving an opportunity for listeners to come to Jesus. God's love for us is summed up in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then Jesus said himself in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So with that in mind, I, I ask you today, regardless of your relationship with the Lord, will you please pray with me and pray out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, I know, I believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. And I believe that Jesus is, suffered and died on the cross for me for my sins and he defeated death he arose from the grave in three days but i'm a sinner lord i ask you to forgive me i repent of my sins and i walk away from them now but please help me because i will be tempted i need you jesus i am hopeless i am nothing without you i ask you to come into my heart and I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I will serve you all of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. So with this prayer, we're letting the Lord know that we believe. And we're pledging to serve him. And he will help us as temptations come. We are beginning a relationship with Jesus. So I encourage you to study the word of God. To pray. To learn more about the Lord and the promises that he offers. And always praise and obey with gratitude. And you will grow in faith. And you will find that you have inner peace and joy regardless of your circumstances. Remember that we can turn to the Lord and lean on him for strength and deliverance. Well, thank you for joining me on this episode of Turn to God with Karen. I am Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, podcaster, advocate, and a, 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 a ambassador for Christ. So stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 6 Eastern Standard Time. I invite you to share any comments, any feedback, any suggestions you might have. And you can do that at my website, KarenJaneCasey.com. That's C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E. C -A -S -E -Y. When you go to my website, you will also see information about books, podcasts, blogs, and, and also you will see very um, in, uh, resource information about domestic violence. So my intent is always to promote peace and hope for you in your overcoming and healing only comes, that only comes from the Lord. Well, thank you and God bless.